What's up, everyone? Carmine Dinesco here, Made in America. We got an awesome show today. So much going on. So many things happening. Let me bring on the king of manufacturing, Mr. Christopher Guerrero. Chris, what's happening? Carmine, what's happening, man? Next week, big Oh, big my week. gosh. It's crazy. A lot, of, a lot of buzz with the hardware show and our new program where yeah. we're going to kick it off live at the yeah. hardware show, Inspire 100. So tell everybody, tell the audience what that's about. I mean, yeah, so um, pretty cool, a, a pretty cool program. Yeah, so the, the brainchild of, of, uh, of our uh, board member, Mr. Matt Nuncio and, uh, and Chris Guerrero and some of our other um, board members and, uh, you know, ambassadors, people that's been thinking of a way to reward and help some of these inventors, some of these product developers that are out there kicking ass, man. They're doing great. They got some products out there they're selling. So we have this top 100 contest and uh, you can apply and you can be awarded one of the top 100 uh, products of the year, which is going to go and, you know, all over, it'll be on the internet, social media. It's going to be it covered in some newspapers and magazines. We really got a lot of cool stuff happening with it. And uh, we're going to launch it at the hardware show. It's pretty cool. It is. We're going to get a lot of hype from it. So, you know, speaking about innovative products, we've got our guest on today with Bill Zanoni on the product Fenzi. So, hey, welcome to the show, Bill. How you doing, guys? Today's the day we're going to let you talk about how great your product is. But before we do that, I want to hear about you. I know you you uh, you got a lot of things going on. You came up with this cool product. But let's talk about Bill a little bit. Who is Bill? And then how did you how did you uh, really look at this this product and a need in the market? How did you come up with it? You know, what was a, what was the the aha moment? You know, being an inventor and entrepreneur yourself. And taking, you know, I, I say everyone talks about ideas, but until you take action, that's all it is, an idea. So you took action. You got a pretty cool product. So let, let's hear your story a little bit. So like a lot of dads in, uh, in America, once my boy was of age, I wanted him to play uh, t-ball and baseball after that. And I wanted to get involved. I decided to coach and I became a, a coach. And then I actually coached a little for my daughter's team after that. So after a couple of years of uh, doing that and at, at the bench, encouraging the children to keep their things in order and, and drink their water, especially on hot days, uh, I realized at the end of one day, uh, I was picking up all the water bottles and half of them were drunk, half of them weren't even touched. Uh, but for the most part, they were laying in the mud and abandoned. And I'm picking up and cleaning up and I'm going, there's gotta be a better way. You know, and you can't have the parents standing right behind them encouraging them what to do every moment. They probably wouldn't want it anyway. So uh, I said, I'm gonna make it fun and cool for the kids to hold their water. They'll wanna use it and they'll clean up and they probably won't leave the bottle behind because they'll put it back in their fancy and take their fancy in their bottle, stick it in their bag or even their pocket because it can fit in a, a large pocket or regular size pocket. And uh, I just, that was my aha moment. I said, there's a need for this and uh, I'm gonna look into it. and. I did some shopping uh, first, like a Google, and then I did a little further, had a search done, and next thing you know, I'm talking to Steve, and we're working on uh, a design. And it's made in the U.S. So Steve is my partner in New Hampshire at Polyject, so we do all of it. It's all made in the USA. So this is, again, where I start going, USA, USA. <laughs> I, I, I like that a lot. I, I I believe in trying to make it in USA as much as possible. Absolutely. And I think we got a good process. So it works out. So, so let, let, let's get into that. Right. I, I used to coach little league and I know we had specific rules on what you could drink, what you shouldn't drink. Like we didn't want colored Gatorades because it was spill on white uniforms. So we tried to make everything clear, but, but it was the same thing. We had, you know, our baseball bags hanging up on, on the fences. I wish we had a fancy because that would have been ideal. Cause you're right. You find water bottles on the ground. And it was a kind of a one of our structured rules is you had to pick up all your garbage. If there wasn't a garbage can nearby to uh, to keep it clean. And we have the tidy hook now, which has a bag as well. So these all go hand in hand, right? You put the fence on the fence, tidy hook on the fence. You got a place for trash. You got a place to hold your water bottle. And now with COVID and all the other, you know, colds and flu season, it keeps it separate. So you know which one's yours. Right, you can have your own private labels on it, your own colors. So walk through that a little bit. I think this is a great idea for these 
AAU clubs and these little league clubs and all these T-ball clubs that can really, you know, distribute to all their teams. Yeah, well, that's what we thought about. I put a lot of thought into the back plate. It's a four inch circle and that's a popular size. And um, we all know that every team has its own logos and every travel team and even every little league in every town I've noticed, has, they all have their own logo or their own uh, identification. Mm -hmm. Now this is my Fancy logo on, on a sticker that I had made up. It happens to be weatherproof and you can easily put a name and a number on it with an indelible link marker if you want, if you want to personalize it. Or someone could put their own sticker right over that or just start with a basic Fancy and put their own sticker on it. Yep. So, there's that and the fact that uh, it holds any size bottle. Um, yeah. Believe it or not, this, this I, 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 I was putting Gatorade bottles in this thing. Again, this is even beauty. larger than uh, this is even larger than a Gatorade bottle. It, it'll fit right in there. I mean, this is impractical to do, but it goes in there. Wow. Now, it's not on the fence, so I have to hold it against my chest. But yeah, wow. Look at that. that is that's that's pretty cool. But any other thing. Like and, you, and, you, and you can specify the colors for the color of the teams, right? Yeah. I, mean, it, it, I think it's it's great. I mean, I, I haven't seen this at some point. You can get into Major League Baseball and start doing some, uh, you know, some licensing and trademarks. That's a softball team my niece yeah. played on a few years ago. We set them all up with uh, labels like this, and they went down to a tournament in South Carolina, and they gave out uh, a bunch of fences to the other team. It was a different logo. I don't have it with me at the moment. I could dig it out of a box, but it, it shows the state of Massachusetts identifying where they were from yeah. as a gift to the other team. Yeah, it's funny because when we went to the Nationals in Cooperstown, back then the kids were doing all these different pins. We had our own pins from the yeah, Hampshire, and, pins. and they were yeah. collecting all the pins. From, I still have them. I just gave them all to my, my son. We had like hundreds of them, of, of, of every team from every location. Yeah. So I could see you know, that definitely being... Uh, Part of that. So, so talk about how did you get involved with the design of it? Like you came up with this idea, then what happened? You start sketching it out on a napkin, start talking to tooling people. How did, how did that all happen? Because I think everyone I... talks to me about what are the steps and they're pretty similar. Everyone has maybe a different path, but steps are steps. You, you come up with an idea and until you act on it, it's all it is. So you obviously you start laying it out. It's just as you would expect. I, I went out to a model and hobby shop and got that plastic you can heat up in hot water and mold stuff with. And, and I first started out my, with a piece that had four clips. And I was thinking of clipping into the fence at first. But then that evolved into going in and turning, just that quarter turn. You might have noticed me do it when I took this on and off that chain link. Uh, and a really brilliant guy named... Jen, Glenn Schultz, he, I met him through Steve up there. He actually put it on, on um, CAD for me and we worked together and a lot of visits to his place. We finally came up with this patented grip that I have on the back of it. And uh, it works on every fence I've ever brought it up to, even old rusty fences, as long as it's that standard two inch square, mm -hmm. give or take an eighth of an inch, it'll, it'll go in there water turn grip and that won't go up down or which, away which that is the industry standard right everywhere you go that type of fence is around all the ball fields so that's the standard definitely enough so that i wasn't worried about the the odd ball that might be occasionally you'll see a one inch square a small yeah. link but that's not that's very rare to see that and then you might go in some uh really fancy diamond or ball field and they've got concrete block dugouts and so it's not going to work there. However, the parents can just use them to hold their drinks along the fence when they're watching the game, which right. I've had a lot of people say they like to use them for. So, so you got an idea. You start laying it out on CAD, right, which is critical. Like, it, again, you, did. you have yeah. to make it so it's manufacturable. So you got a good guy, knows how to do CAD, laid it out. Then you said, okay, now what? I got to build a tool, right? So you got to find That's a manufacturer. Right. We built two different molds. They're only single cavity because we we uh, we're trying to get to the first one, and uh, but one single cavity mold. Um, we have one mold for the front. That's this whole thing in one shot, which is quite a quite an accomplishment by Steve. When you see the thin the thin marks, absolutely it injects in one spot. That's 
ABS plastic, which is your typical plastic you see on car dashboards. And yeah, ABS one is, a, is one of the stronger plastics that can handle cold temps, hot temps, durable, That's right. break, crack. I've had a, yeah, I've had a Fenzy on my dog kennel outside three years straight, all seasons. I could go out there right now and shove a bottle and it won't break. Right, yep. That's a testament to ABS. Absolutely. Maybe I don't want it to be that that good. Maybe I want kids to break it after you and buy another one. I don't know. <laughs> That's a big enough back, market. <laughs> this is polypropylene plastic on the back. That's meant to be a little uh, more flexible. So this will work better. So these other tabs will grab the fence. Four tabs grab the fence. I mean, even, even once these two go in and, and turn, because you may have noticed chain link has two depths to it because of the way it's made. So two sides are going to be deeper than the other two sides. That's why two of these grips are deeper than the other two. Yeah. And uh, that, that poly clean plastic is also a pretty common plastic in the industry. But what we did was we, we devised two tabs here and we mold the two different parts and then we'll take those parts, snap them together and then sell it as one unit. Yeah, you can see it more cool. easily with the different colors. Yeah, so I think this is this is great. So then, okay, so now you got a tool. You know, you, know you can manufacture. Now you need a couple of things. You need distribution. You need a website. You need sell sheets. You need packaging. You need marketing. So how did you take the next steps? Because they're all, I mean, again, Steve, uh, Steve is a great help from the plant. Bill decided to launch the product. So now when you launch the product, you're in the product, right? You got to mm -hmm. have some capital. You got to make sure the stuff is getting done. You're not trying to license it. Someone's not, not doing all the work for you. That's right. And, and you come to realize the hard work is ahead of you now. Um, although I spent a lot of time developing it. And we have, like I said, a patent on the utility. I also have a patent on the design. And I've got a trademark protection of the Penzi name. So that's a good that start. Patented that. product. Right, trademarked. I mean, I, I mean, that's great. You got a great tool. You got a great manufacturer. Now yeah. you got to show the world. Right now, you got to get it out there. So, so we put we put together a website. My daughter helped me, but it's just uh, something we made ourselves. You can go on and see it right now. It's up, and we know it could be. How better. do we get there? How do we get there? Uh, Fenzy dot com. So F E N Z E E. -E. -E. Fenzy dot com. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And um, it, it, Teresa did a great job of uh, introducing the product and showing everybody. You can order from that website right now. It, it functions. We've sent some stuff out to onesie, twosie orders. No large orders yet, although we're, uh, I've been sending out um, sell cards or postcards to little leagues in Eastern Massachusetts. Um, it's, it's only I got good news for you. I got good news. I didn't tell you yet. I'm putting that on my sell sheet for the open call in uh, Walmart. So I'm, I'm working on all that by next week. I have to have all that submitted. So I'll try to get it done before the week's up. So, so we'll that. see what Walmart says. They may say, Hey, we want it. And then, then the rest starts now the packaging and the logistics and the yeah. shipping. <laughs> That's when the panic sets in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what Steve says he can do. You can do 800 in a day just with that single cavity mold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty when when you get when you have the tooling done and the well, molding of it, it it's yeah, pretty cool. And I think he's so, only talking about eight hours there. So yeah, right, yeah, yeah. He he can run you know two 10 hour shifts if he had to. He can run 20 hours right. more, but he can definitely run two 20 hours with no problem six days a week. So that, I don't think the capacity won't won't be an issue. So okay, so now, so now you got to get the next big step is getting sales, right? So I know you're yeah. sending a lot of sell sheets out. You're going to all the local places first. I'm going to try to bring it to Walmart and see what Walmart says. But then, you know, certainly we're going to need, if Walmart does say yes, we're going to need some type of packaging. And again, this doesn't have to be a big deal. I mean, this could be, this is kind of a fun, cool item to sell right in the sporting goods section, right? With some, some simple package. It doesn't have to be in a box and get too expensive. It could be some simple packaging that identifies you can even use, you know, if you would just have a Walmart, we could do something, with, you know, on a, la a label here that says made in the U.S. with private yeah. label, label it with Walmart. And then we can do a simple hook packaging where it fits on a little, uh, a little pin. So yeah, a lot I of think, options, I think, with this one. And it's a pretty rugged part, so uh, item. So I know they probably frown upon it, but, but I think you can put a bunch of them in a box and when they get to the end user, the marketer, 
if we provide them a way of uh, displaying it. Yeah, right. yeah, they'll have to go to a bulk box and then this piece, because you may be able to send, I don't know, 24 in a bulk box mm -hmm. to, to Walmart, then they'll take them out and hang them on a rack. I mean, yeah. you can probably, you can, you can even use some of the, you know, some of the curtain detail on this to hang them. But, but you know, again, I think you want to have, it would be good to have something on here as a private brand for them. So I'm going to, so I'll see what they say. But yeah, I, but I think the, there's a lot of options here. On the website, we do offer, uh, we mentioned labeling. It'd be an option. They'd pay extra for it if we, if a customer order order fences and then also order a customized label. Yeah. That could be another, uh, an add-on. Yeah, definitely. And we can get other colors too. So what, what would you say to, to people listening? You know, we have a pretty, pretty big audience. So someone getting, you know, starting out in this industry, you have your own business that you run, right? As, a, yeah. as, a, as an entrepreneur. Now you're in the inventing space of new products. What kind of recommendation would you give them? Because it's not easy. You know, it's not easy. And I always tell no. people, don't kid yourself. It's not, it's a process and you have to follow it. Yeah, I would say, uh... Like everybody says, don't get discouraged and keep working at it because it's time consuming. You got to put in your time. Um, but if you believe in the product and, and of course, you got to go out there and make sure there's a market for it before you put a real lot of time in it. And, and uh, I got nothing but good feedback when I did that with the Fenzy. Um, I, I would say you, you have to be um, willing to put in the hours, but, but get good people. Um, I found my mold guy and the designer through the University of Lowell Plastics Engineering Department. Yep. He, he, it's, it's very uh, unique. Uh, UMass Lowell is one of only, I'd say three at the most four schools in the country that offer a plastics engineering degree. It's a small community and they all know each other. And uh, I went to school there as well. So I, I knew right where to go. And, and uh, that, that got me, an introduction to Steve and Polly Jack. His dad had also been a student there. His dad and he worked together originally. There we go, Carmine. Again, being present, right? I can't talk about being in a moment, being present. So yeah. you said, okay, I went to school at Lowell. Let me see what they can do. Oh, and guess what? Now you've got a, a, a pretty good sized manufacturer right in New Hampshire, made in the US. Again, another connection. And right up obviously in New Hampshire. we met through Steve, right? Well, I was about to say that. So Steve introduced me to a designer to help me. I said earlier, Glenn Schultz uh, helped me get to where it worked perfectly. And, and then I'm, I'm saying, okay, fine. Now we got the product. How am I going to sell? I went for a, a, a year or so trying this and that in my spare time and trying to figure it out. And I said to Steve, I, I, I need some help. I, I need somebody that can get me to the next level. And I'm like, a couple... Uh, shortly after that, he must have talked to you first, mm -hmm. but he said, I have somebody I think you should talk to. His name is Chris Guerrero, and uh, he's a friend of mine. And I had already seen some of his products, uh, the tech remover, mm -hmm. stuff like that. And uh, I Which said, I may be going on Good Morning America. I'm working on that right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that thing works great. I know there are mm -hmm. others on the market, so you're competing with that, but. The, he can pop those out. I bet. You this know, thing is, uh, it's quickly. it's lifetime warranty. It's one handed. You know, I mean, it, it, like you can sell them in multiple packs. You can sell them single. It's the, crazy. The one handed thing. One handed makes one -handed. it really. You know, never have to even touch it, and it works. I mean, it's so nice how it works. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I show this Good Morning America. Like, oh my God, we, this is the time of year. We need to get that on the show. They're meeting on it right now, actually. And I went up there and I met with Steve, and there's Chris sitting in his office. Uh, just hanging out like uh, he's just visiting like he was and we hit it off right away and you made me comfortable right away you made me feel like uh, this thing really can work and and that led to a couple other talks and uh, here we are today uh, yeah, I feel I, like I think it's, I think that that's a big deal confident. right because you you and, and not to get specific but you had some help with some other people and it didn't really go anywhere yeah. and you and you know right. so like like come on anybody that has a bad experience, they're always a little worried about moving forward. And I, 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 I think Bill now feels pretty comfortable with me. Like yes, I said, Bill, I told you I'm only going to help you. <laughs> and, and that's what I've always tried to do, right? I, I, you know, I, I, and I understand if you had a bad experience, it's always a little reluctant to jump back into something. And, but 
you see, I mean, um, I, I think, you know, the, having, having the right team around you is critical. I, I haven't said that in corporate America. Like I know what I'm good at, what I'm not good at, but having surrounded around everybody who has a little variation of skill sets really builds for an unbelievable bond of people and a team atmosphere that just is incredible. And, and Bill knows he can text me. I think you have 10 o'clock at night. I That's right. Right away. Yeah. Yeah. So it I, feels I, like you feel like family. It's like talking to a friend, a close yeah, friend. I, and I, I, I appreciate that. And I, and I, and I'm glad you feel that way now, because I, I get it when you work with the wrong person, you're not sure. Like, is this another guy blowing smoke? And at least now you feel it's, it's real. I mean, you yeah, can call yeah, me yeah, text me any time. Yeah, I want it to feel, uh, you know, when you first meet someone, you want to make sure you're on the same page and they want to help you and not just ask yeah. for a lot of money up front or, or, or yep. get too expensive once you've gone down a path. You realize, right. I don't know if I can continue this direction. Uh, you got to build yeah. a little bit of trust at first sometimes and you immediately made me feel good. So yeah, thank you well, for that. Right, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate you, you saying that. So, so here we go. We got, we got, you know, Bill has his own business. So he said, okay, I got an idea. I'm going to venture off into the entrepreneur inventor world. It's not easy. It's, it takes time. It takes commitment. And it's finding the right people around you that really are, are, have your best interest. Not just like Bill said, collecting some cash and saying, okay, good luck. I've coached you for two days. It doesn't work like that. It needs to be a partnership. It needs to be a relationship. I mean, I, I even told Bill in the time when it blows up, if we get into Walmart, I'll help him set up all the... Uh, the accounts for Shopify and for ShipStation and make sure it's packaged right and it's on the right pallet. So we'll do all that. I, so think, I, I, should... I, I think you acted though. You acted on an idea. That's key. I mean, I can't tell you people tell me I have ideas. You acted on it and you, you brought it, you brought the wheels in motion. I, I did. And, and, you know, I didn't mention earlier, but it, concurrently with trying to develop the idea, I was going to meetings at, uh, in Cambridge uh, of uh, the Inventors Association in the area um i think they, so they probably you probably know george peters then you know george peters uh i i might have been bill at the time bill iola i think his name is yeah yeah i i, Iacocca, I yeah, yeah yeah he's, that's who it is it's bill and and now george runs bill. that so that's pretty interesting i just talked to george yesterday <laughs> and there was a guy bob uh he was a, he was an engineer he, yeah. he worked at, at uh he worked down there at uh mit yeah yeah, I did a, uh, I did a, a presentation, me and John D. Paola, paintbrush cover at MIT for him. Isn't that funny? I, and I didn't even know you uh, knew this guy until today. I used to go, I used to, go to their monthly meetings. There. Okay. Yeah, the, the, uh, the Inventors Association. Right, yeah. Yeah, I made some contacts there. Actually, an attorney that I, uh, the attorney who I, who I got the patent through uh, was a guest speaker at, at one of those meetings. That's how I met him. No, oh, great. Yeah, All right, yeah. cool. So, how, so how can we? So, so the best way to, to buy this product, if someone's interested, is go to, to Fenzy.com right now, right? Right now, you can buy it through Fenzy.com. We're, yeah. we're not on the shelf anywhere, of course, but uh, yeah, we're working on that, though. I'm working on that. I, mean, I figure the yeah. best spot would be the open call for Walmart, which is I get invited every year because I'm a vendor and uh -huh. I usually get a presentation, but but they they look at all the products I send and go, okay, we want this one, this one, this one. Then they send meetings and then you have a presentation in June. That's how that works. You have to have them in by April 7th, I think it is. And then, um, and then you, then you get, then they look at all their products and they say, okay, we pick out of 10,000 that showed up 12,000. We pick a thousand. And I've, for the last three years, I've been selected twice a year. So Excellent. I'm hoping uh, I get selected again, but I'll, yours will be on the, on the list this year. And then we'll see if we can get it into, into Walmart. It'd be, I mean, think about it. It'd be a great, great product, product. In a sporting area. I'm working Absolutely. hard to get some numbers, you know, so I can tell them I've, I've sold a bunch. Uh, haven't done that yeah. yet, but we've, you know, yeah. we've sold small orders, but that's it. Yeah. I mean, I think it's an early enough product where we can say it is it's early and it needs some shelf space. And that's where uh -huh. I think Walmart can, can help. And, then, and, then, and they're really pushing made in America. I mean, they're saying even uh, uh, the surveys are showing that the folks will pay 20% more for a made in America product. Well, glad to hear that. I'm encouraged with that. Yeah, and it's a it's a big. I mean, there's there's they're spending. They, I think there's double the amount of money they're spending. It's a big big pot of money to help promote well, made in America at Walmart because Walmart used to be all all stuff from abroad, from China, right? They were the number one import from China. Now it's changing. Tables are changing a little bit, which is great. I'm willing to. I probably shouldn't even say this, but I, I'd even be willing to make just a little less 
to sell my product made in America. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't worry. They're going to help you make less. They're going to take half of it right off the top. <laughs> yeah. When you go in, when you go into distribution like that, you know, if you're selling it for 10 bucks on, yeah. on a retail shelf, they're getting, you know, you're selling it to them for five. So your cost yeah. has got to be well below two to make this thing or even one to make it work. But we, we know the cost that we can do it. It'll, it'll be it'll yeah. be fine. And then we can do double packs. Like you said, you can sell them in triple packs. Yeah. You, you know, you, you, so there's a lot of different ways to market this. And then once you get into Walmart, you can start getting into, you know, Sam's clubs and the, and the bigger clubs. It, it all starts with, with how it sells. Okay. All right, cool. cool. Well, Bill, thanks for being on the show. I, I, again, just another step on entrepreneurship with inventing is act. You got to make the steps. And, and Bill made a, you know, he, he said he was going to do it. He did it. He came up with a design. He's, he spent money on tooling. And now he's in that heavy duty segment of marketing and branding it out to the audience. So congratulations, Bill. You did, you did the right thing. And I'm, I'm happy to be working with you. Thank you, Chris. Wow. Yeah. I love the steps, though. It, it, you know, uh, we talk with inventors all the time. And uh, they believe that after they get the product manufactured, that that was really the hard part. It, it, it's not an easy journey for inventors, even after you get your product made and delivered, as, as you said, Bill, I mean, it's now you have to sell the product. So, I mean, it's a constant journey and uh, you know, that's what I love about this show. We're, we're not just filling people up with hot air, how easy it is. It's, 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 it's work. It's a job. It's, it's fun because you're an inventor, but it's still, you have to be dedicated to it. And come on, think about what Joy Mangano said. It's the same every time, whether it's yeah. a new product, that she did, you know, this year or last year, it's a, it's a process. Yep. It's the same thing. People are going to try to knock it off. Yeah. It's going to, you're going to have the right packaging. You're going to have the right retail brand. You're going to have the right videos. You're going to be on QVC, right? And so it's, she said, it's the same. It's not like it's different every time. It's the same process. Yep. So yeah. it, it holds true. No doubt. You know, and just think, Chris, you and I have done hundreds, if not thousands wow. of products. And, you know, we follow that process. Everything's a new product, but we know what to look out for. And those missteps can really set an inventor that's going on his own, just, you know, ad libbing, you know, it could, it could make or break the product, making it to market. Yeah. And I, I think you got to be careful up front too, where you spend the cash, right? Spending it in the right allocations yeah. and with the right team. So you don't run out of it before you get to the mm -hmm. right stage of getting it launched. Because once you build it, marketing is, is equally as difficult if not more difficult yeah. to get it out without spending a whole boatload, but not yeah. putting up your house, right. For a mortgage. <laughs> yeah. Don't do, that. <laughs> don't do that. Yeah. I think my wife Rita would have something to say about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> all right. Cool. Thanks again, Bill. Appreciate yeah, it. Bill. Awesome. Awesome. We Thank wish you all luck. Bill. So I love Thank that product. You. I think it's really cool. You know, when you have a specific laser focus on what the product is, you know, it's a great way to get started. So I think it's really cool that, that, uh, I mean, think about it. I mean, sports venues everywhere, you know, I mean, it's great that you have that ability to offer that product. It's oh, really cool. Yeah. Huge, we, start, we started, we started with the T-ball bench, but, uh, there are other huge. sports. Uh, you can use it in lacrosse. You can use it in basketball. In football, throughout the city. I mean, yeah. Volleyball inside. There's, there's a whole venue. Yeah. It's a wide, yeah. wide venue. Yeah. That it can be yeah. Used NASCAR. Uh, yep. yeah, I love even it. had people, suggest a plant holder and put it on fences uh, along <laughs> yeah. church church yeah. yards for votive yeah. candles god yeah i've heard all the ideas uh, anywhere there's a fence we can hold something dog parks yeah. um yep you could you yeah. could put a little bowl in the fence that the dog could drink from or, or your own drink could be on your own fence uh you take yeah. it with you when you leave yeah. all right you know, yeah so, that's yeah. why that's why a great product um basically starts out you know narrow which is good and then it mm. kind of expands on its own a good product does that and i think this product just like that so awesome uh we're going to close up the show i thank you for coming on today and you know all you listeners out there definitely have a use for it go on out to the website make a purchase that would be an awesome thing f-e-n-z-e-e.com you know? yeah. -E -E yeah i like the name too everything's great so chris man this will be our last post uh before the big hardware show and uh we're gonna we're gonna do some live stuff from there right we sure are. We're going to have uh, our favorite Captain Emery on on, um, on Tuesday at four o'clock live in Vegas. It's awesome. So be sure to watch that because she is connected. She's got a lot of energy. She she has 
products all over the houseware hardware segment and she's got great great guests we're going to have a lot of media exposure a lot of interviews it's going to be a lot, uh, really a fun time yeah. and the weather looks absolutely amazing of course 90s and sunny but, <laughs> of course but of course it's dry it's dry heat. <laughs> it's a dry heat that's all you ever hear <laughs> Uh, all right. Thank you, everyone, for listening in. Please go on out to Google Play, iTunes, wherever you consume your podcasting material. Leave us a rating, a review. Let us know how we're doing. And make sure you subscribe to the Made in America show. You can check out the video portion of this if you want to see the products, what we're talking about, what we're doing on the Launch Network. And uh, we would love to, uh, to hear what you have to say about that also. So for myself, Carmen Dinesco, for Mr. Christopher Guerrero, we thank you for listening. We will catch you next time on Made in America. You all take care.